you guys, Sean C. Phillips here in my video talking about my picks for the best and worst films of 2018. Now, the way I did this is I have a, you know, broken down into categories. The ones that I say are the absolute best, which are ones that are absolute must-watches. Then I have it, um, you know, ones that are worth watching. Ones that are just about to like the absolute best ones, but are still ones that I would say to go out and check these ones out if you guys have not seen them. Then I have, of course, the worst films, and then the uh, best worst films. And those are ones that are kind of like movies that are so bad they're good. They're movies that I know are bad movies, but they just have like fun qualities to them that are really fun to watch. And like even though they're not great, they're still ones that I would say you should check them out if you guys want to watch like a, like a silly, ridiculous movie. Now, of course, though, there's movies that I, I'm sure that I forgot. I'm going to look back on this video later and be like, how did I forget to put that one as one of my favorites? Or how did I forget to put that one as one of my least favorites? And of course, too, you know, um, some of these movies, you know, may have been, you know, made in like 2017 or 2016, but not released until 2018. That kind of stuff, or you know, what I mean, like, some because sometimes people say, oh yeah, this movie was actually from this time, because sometimes they released two in other countries at different times. So like, so some of these may have been released in America later than they did in Europe and that kind of stuff. But I'm gonna go through here and just kind of talk a little bit about some of my ones. The main ones I'm gonna discuss though are the the absolute ones that I say are must watch for sure, best and. And then the worst ones. And like I said, I'm sure there's stuff that I forgot. And I'm sure there's also a lot of really other good ones that I totally may not have seen. So in, in the comments below, though, let me know your, your guys' picks for the absolute best. And if you guys have ones, too, that are ones you would say, you know, should still check out what your picks are for the worst films. And if you guys have any picks for, you know, the best worst movies where, like I said, where they're ones that are not great movies, but they're, like, bad in a way that they're fun to watch. For example, like something like Troll 2 is, like, a movie that's considered a best worst movie. Now, the first one I have on here for best is the film The Favorite, which stars Emma Stone and uh, Rachel Weisz, and I really, really love that movie. It's like, when it comes to like some period piece films, sometimes I don't really like them, and sometimes I really cannot get into them. Other times, I really, really can, and like that one, I really, really got into the movie and thought it was an absolutely a must-watch, and it's essentially, though, set, and I think, I think it was like 1680 or something like that, about the Queen... And it's basically about uh, Rachel Weisz's character who is kind of like dating her and like in secret and everything. And her cousin who comes there to the, you know, where the, to the castle and like she was basically like, you know, things that happened, she kind of lost her money and, did, you know, she's kind of going to this castle to try and kind of like... Um, get like something to do and try and see if she can kind of rise up up again and it's kind of her trying to woo over the queen that's essentially what it is and the movie's done in this like insane style it's from the same director who did the movie um the um I'm like blanking right now when I'm trying to talk about uh, killing of the killing of a sacred deer, and like I really love that film. He also directed The Lobster, which is one I've never seen, which I've heard amazing things. I, I really need to watch that one. But it's done like um, the director kind of like stated like kind of like Amadeus, the film Amadeus, but like this. Um, kind of twisted weird take on this whole thing going on back then and the way it was shot and like the music and everything there's like these insane angles that he's using these wide angle lenses and the camera's like moving in these interesting ways it is an absolute must watch it's one of those movies too that prompts walkouts like when I saw it in the theaters there was like people leaving right and left because I think they didn't know what they were seeing and they didn't know they were seeing something that was so quirky and odd and I, I especially love period piece films when they have an extreme quirky level to them like another period piece movie uh, was perfume that was from years back which I love that movie and that takes in like weird turns in that film but that's one if you guys have never seen that movie perfume check that one out uh, one of the other ones is the movie that stars Ben Foster and um Elle Fanning, and that movie, this movie kind of went under the radar, and it's called Galveston, and it's essentially this, like, really, probably one of the most depressing movies I can say I've seen in a long time. It's just a very sad, like, just like a gloomy type film about, um, you know, um, Ben Foster's character finding out that he's, like, got this lung condition and he's going to die, and he ends up, you know... Um, one way or another, he ends up like helping and saving Elle Fanning's character, and they're kind of like going on this journey together. And it's like all these kind of things that happen along the way. But it's just a really, really great character piece. Highly recommend you guys check this out. Check that one out. The next one here is um, uh, the movie here called The Oath. And uh, I love that film. That, that movie really went under the radar. Um, no one really saw it. I have the um, I have the 
I don't know if I have the case next to me, but it's the um and the actor who you know, who stars in the film also directed the film, and he you know was in the movie uh, Blockers, and uh, so I think it's like um, Ike Bernhardt's. I think I might be mixing up his name, but uh, also. Um, I hate when I don't have the covers in front of me to hold the things up, but um, Tiffany Haddish stars in the film as his wife, and it, um, it's I think it's probably my favorite of her films that she's been in. Very different. It's essentially though set where you have to kind of pledge your oath to the president, and they, everyone has to sign these documents. And uh, you know Ike Bernhardt's character doesn't want to sign these documents, and it's like set together, you know, with the family together for I think it was Thanksgiving, and there's all kind of turmoil and arguments with each other because he didn't. It was using to sign and these men show up kind of trying to make him sign and it's kind of what happens and it's like this insane situation it's one of those movies too you know at first I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it from when I was reading about it and like and then seeing it I'm like this is a really really good movie that went really under the radar uh, the next one here is a film called Mandy which was you know starring um, Nicolas Cage, and it's a really, really trippy movie. A lot of people have, you know, said it's Nicolas Cage's best film in years, and I would say it really is. He did an amazing job. It's a really great revenge film, and it's essentially though about something ends up happening to Nicolas Cage's wife, and he gets like these this cult comes in, and and what they end up doing to his wife, and it's like him getting revenge, and there's these insane like sadomasochistic characters and these like bondage outfits that are kind of like characters out of like Hellraiser, that kind of thing. It's a really, really out there movie. Great Great music, um, you know, just a, a director of Beyond the Black Rainbow uh, who made the film, and it has really cool music and everything. A composer too. I think it was his last movie because he passed away like, a little bit before it released. But he did music in like a rival and everything. Always loved his music. Um, Next one here is Suspiria, which is the Suspiria, you know, uh, not necessarily a remake because it's very, very different story. And Chloe Grace Moritz is in the film. Uh, Maya Goth is in the movie. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I really got into that movie. I love Tom York's music in the movie. It fits so well. It was probably some of my favorite of his music. And real low-key, it's the kind of music for him. You know, Tom York was from, is from Radiohead. That was one of his solo projects that he did. But I thought, though, you know, the music in this movie... He did some other solo releases in the past, but the music in the movie fits so well, and it was a very different take on Suspiria. So the original Suspiria is an amazing movie, though, and this is so different. But it's just, it's one of those movies that you kind of, when you think about it more and more, you like it a lot more. There's some movie, like, kind of like when I left the movie, I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that, this exactly. It's so different, and like, it's just so not at all with the color palette of the original, with the lighting and like the reds and the blues and all that. It's not like the original at all like with any of it with the music or anything but it's so different but it's one of those things like I said when you think about it more later I liked it a whole lot more uh, the next one that I picked was a movie it was all done in the computer screen, which was a movie called Searching. And there's a lot of movies like that, you know, like Unfriended. And there's been a couple other things, like a movie called like Cam something. A lot, a lot of ones that have been inside of the camera, or, you know, inside the computer. And they're all kind of like what you see on the screen and all that. But Searching, was, I think, was, in my opinion, is probably one of the better and most effective, like, thrillers of them. And it's like uh, John Cho's character. And it's like... Um, him trying to find his daughter and he's going through her computer and looking through everything and trying to track her down and what had ended up happening to her. Uh, the next one was a movie called Assassination Nation which really went under the radar and I feel like not a lot of people saw that movie and it was another one that I would highly recommend you guys check out. Check out the trailer to it. It's a really really out there movie. It's all about kind of like sort of like the dangers of social media and what can go wrong when things go terribly wrong and it's dealing with these these all these these girls at high school and something ends up going terribly wrong and people are kind of like it's kind of like at the school and the town and things things are getting leaked out and people's emails and stuff are getting leaked and, and that it's essentially though looking at these girls and they're kind of getting the blame of it and that's essentially what it is and it's just kind of got vibes of the purge a little bit and it's just like everyone kind of cracking up because of it but really great one uh, the next one this one recently came out you know just like uh, two weeks ago or so this is spider-man in the spider-verse which i think is probably one of the best uh, superhero movies in a really long time i mean to me that really resonated is like a really really strong and it really felt like a comic book with the way that it was animated and like the textures and everything and it also felt to me when it came to all the spider-man stories and 
you know, that there have been in the past. As much as I love the Sam Raimi films with, you know, with Tobey Maguire and still always will love those movies, I think this one was the most, with the writing and everything, was the most kind of hip and up on things and it felt like very, very, you know, uh, true to, to like, that got, that the character is supposed to be a teenager and stuff. It really didn't feel like it was kind of written by adults and, and that kind of thing. It, it really felt like a very, tr you know, true to life kind of depiction. Uh, the next one here is another um, Elle Fanning film. It's released this year, but it might have been done a while. And it was The Vanishing of Sydney Hall, which is just another one of those really, really sad movies. And like, you know, it's, it's just kind of like about trying to search for this guy who was this writer and it kind of jumps around in different kind of periods of time. And it's very hard to explain, but was one of those ones that really got like it was just really sad especially one thing that happened and it was like bothering me really bad afterwards it's one of those movies too after you feel like when you when you're watching you feel like you like live through it. it like some movies are like that they really you feel like you kind of live through what was going on uh the next one here is steven soderbergh's film uh unsane which he did and i listened to the claire foy interview and she was kind of didn't even know that it was going to be a movie that anyone saw when she was doing it it was kind of like him doing almost like a student film the way it was he was pitched pitched the movie to her because it was all done you know with cell phones it was just done like what i'm using right now an iphone and it was the whole movie was done that way and i think he used some lenses and stuff and it was her going to the uh therapist office and ends up getting committed to the nut house and it's she basically has been paranoid because of this person who is stalking her and she basically thinks she's seeing him all the time and of course though when she gets unwillingly committed to the nut house because of some things that she says then she immediately when she gets there sees this stalker and it's like is he really there and what's going on but it is really the way it was filmed and everything Juno Temple's also in the movie as well really really you know trippy movie the way it was filmed and everything really glad it came out another Steven Soderbergh movie if you guys ever get a chance to see it was a movie called Bubble which I I mean, he's done lots and lots of movies, but Bubble was one I would recommend as well that I feel like no one really saw. Uh, the next one here is a movie uh, called First Reformed. This is directed by Paul Schrader, and it's um, it's essentially, though, about this priest who, um, you know, he's kind of at this church where the church is kind of not really doing so well. He's kind of been positioned to kind of be like the... Um, almost just do tours and like there's like uh, Cedric the Entertainer is in the movie and you know, he was also playing like the, the priest of this huge mega church that is like the popular church and everything and Cedric the Entertainer was amazing in this movie in the movie it was like a totally different performance for him really dramatic and serious but essentially though you know Ethan Hawke plays the main priest who's at this failing church and it's kind of like about um something is going wrong like something is going on in, this, in Ethan Hawke's life and and it's just like <laughs> It's a build up to this insanity. And if you guys know Paul Schrader, you know, who wrote Taxi Driver and, you know, he directed a movie that I recently saw that came, you know, just recently released on Blu-ray that I never saw before called Sleepless. I really like his stuff. His he, his writing is amazing and same with his directing. Uh, the next one is a movie called Upgrade, which was about um, kind of about this person who ended up being, you know, in an accident and ended up paralyzed, but he had an implant put into him where it kind of controlled his body and made him be able to walk again, but the implant was kind of like telling him things to do and kind of controlling him a little bit, but it was like a super slick film. It was directed by Lee Winghell, you know, who direct, you know, who wrote um, the Insidious films, and I Maybe I don't think he, if he did The Conjuring or not, but he's written a lot of different stuff that James Wan produced or directed. But really thought that was a super slick, super like intense film. The next one, and some people kind of um, have mixed opinions about this one because some people really, really loved it, and some people were like, oh, I didn't like that too much. And that was uh, Hereditary, which I I thought was an absolutely um, crazy movie about dealing with sort of about this grandmother who died and the family's kind of looking into the grandmother's past and like. Um, kind of what she was into and everything and what was going on. It's just a very, very creepy, creepy movie. Um, the next one was uh, Hotel Artemis, which is, you know, uh, Jodie Foster star, star in the film. And it was this weird kind of hospital where uh, criminals could go to it. And it was like only for criminals and you had to kind of be like a member of it to go to this and anyone that was a member could go to it. Batista is in the film as like the nurse. And like I, I've really been a fan of Batista lately. He was in a, like really some really cool stuff recently, but 
it's essentially though um, this hospital and like it's like these people who end up going in there and it's kind of like um, all the, it's like all the bad stuff that's going on because people are kind of hiding out and stuff. It was a really really intense movie as well. Uh, the next one, and this movie, some people might be like, you thought this was one of your favorites, but to me, I really liked this because it was a great character piece, all involving like dogs and people's dogs and like I like the actors and it was a lot of character actors in the movie and everything and it was a movie called Dog Days and it was all just kind of like um kind of every connect character connected by their dogs and it was like um they kind of came together and everything and I like those kind of movies that where like the characters kind of come together and they go how are they gonna have this character meet this character you know what I mean and it's like one of those things like that and I, I love like the, the show called Angry Boys did that at the end which was amazing you know that, that was a great show but I like when characters kind of come together and you're not sure how they're gonna do it um the next one was the Papillon Papillon, Papillon uh, remake which stars, you know, Remy Malik. You know, Remy Malik is amazing. You know, he's from, uh, you know, of course, um, Mr. Robot. And it's essentially, though, you know, it's about these um, people who are sent to this terrible, terrible prison, prison. And the one guy was, like, blamed for something that he didn't do. And it's kind of about them both trying to survive in this prison. And it's, like, all the kind of stuff that they're going through. And it's just a really, really sad, intense movie. I love the original film, you know, with Steve McQueen and Dustin Hoffman. But I thought the, the, the remake was actually really well done. The next one was the movie that Bradley Cooper directed, which stars him and Lady Gaga, Star is Born. I like the original film, you know, with Barbara Streisand. Well, that wasn't technically the original. That was, like, the, the third rendition or so of the story, I think, or second or third. But, um... I thought Lady Gaga did an amazing job in the role and you know Bradley Cooper's singing isn't amazing in it but it worked it really did work for w the way he was supposed to be it's kind of like a Chris Christopherson type character type of type voice which he was going for and it worked for that next one I picked was the film that Jonah Hill directed, uh, Mid-90s, which is a film in it with a similar kind of style to, like, Kids. Kids was a much more, it was a, it was a gloomy film with some bad, really terrible stuff going on, but the movie had the same similar kind of vibe to Kids, about this kid who was a skateboarder, and then him kind of becoming friends with these, skateboard, these fellow skateboarders, and kind of his relationship with his brother, and all the kind of stuff that they're going through. Uh, the next one, I actually literally just saw this one, and this movie and I'll call it with um um I'm going to mix up the names though because I don't have everything written down but it's Ben is back and the uh, star of it um his father directed the movie and it was essentially though about um and it's Julie Roberts stars in the film and it's Lucas Till, Lucas Huss I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm totally mixing it up because like I said I don't have all this written down but it's essentially though about this kid who was sent to a sober living living house who ended up coming home for Christmas and um you know they're all with the mother and the her, you know his stepfather are real nervous and same with the sister and everything that he's back because you know something bad had happened you know recently with him and he's had some major drug problems and it was a very truthful really realistic look at a recovering drug addict and you know and Julia Roberts who's playing the mother and what she was going through and everything it was just a very another very very emotional and a movie too where I'm glad that the trailer really didn't ruin anything it really didn't show much about what happens at all I didn't expect anything that happened in it and I, I like that when the trailers don't you know show everything and the last pick for best is on um, the movie that um you know um was uh, called the mule which i'm t I i'm totally blanking on everybody's names here because i'm trying to remember everything but it's um yeah but it's it's clint eastwood i don't know why i'm blanking on names but yeah sometimes when you have all these things to remember it's it gets confusing because i normally i'm holding up the you know the dvd cases or blu-rays cases and look at them and everything but it's you know clint eastwood directed the film it's another one that's gotten some mixed re opinions and mixed reviews and everything what i really got into it and it's about clint eastwood um and it's like his life, he was, you know, a farmer and he kind of sold these plants and everything, but everything changed and he didn't uh, adapt to like the internet or anything like that. And it's kind of like he doesn't really have any money anymore and he has to pay for this wedding. And one of like the people that's at the wedding, like, you know, tells him about how he, he you know, since he's a good driver, you know, if he drives, he can make all this money. And Clint Eastwood's char character ends up driving drugs and being like a drug mule. And it's what he goes through. And I really loved it. I really like when Clint Eastwood acts in the movies that he directs. 
and he doesn't do too he sort of like a couple of years ago said he was going to retire from acting but i'm glad he's come back to do this one i feel like th this is probably one of my favorite roles that he's done in years i just really loved him in that movie now i'm going to go through quicker with these the ones that i would say are worth watching now the the first one here is the movie that adam rifkin directed which is one that i would almost say is just about his best like most of these ones i would say just about our best like absolute must watch as well but ones like um I still really did like. And then one was uh, Last Movie Star, which was Burt Reynolds. And it was like um, one of his last films. And it was basically, though, about Burt Reynolds is kind of playing himself in a way, the kind of character about like how he's like, kind of looking back on his life and he, and he goes to this film screening and it's like... Um, it's like these guys that are putting on the film screen. It's like Clark Duke's character and everything. And it's like they don't know what they're doing at all. And he's like kind of embarrassed and like that he's there. And he ends up kind of going on a road trip with um, Errol Winter's character, who's the one's sister. And he kind of goes back and like revisits things of his life and everything. It's, and I love this the way they did stuff when they would put his character into some of his movies. And like they'd have him now kind of talking to himself back in the 70s and stuff like that. And, and things like Smoking the Bandit and, and Deliverance and stuff. It was very smart the way it was put together. Next one, of course, I really liked it and it was Deadpool 2. I haven't, I didn't get to see the PG-13 cut. If you guys have saw that one, let me know how that was. I think they're going to release that one on Blu-ray. Uh, the next one was Widows, which I really liked that movie about these wives having to uh, kind of answer for what their husbands did with this job and this money that they took and they're kind of roped into having to pull up this job to pay back this money and everything. Um, of course, the new Halloween. I thought the new Halloween was really... Because, you know, the new Halloween is kind of canceling out all the other sequels. And I didn't think it was 100% perfect all around or anything, but I do think it's still worth watching. But, you know, that one is considered... The new Halloween is considered the official... or You know, that's what they're saying, Halloween 2, and, you know, without kind of disconnect, you know, crediting all the other sequels. And then, um... Other one was the Bad Times of the El Royale, which I really liked. That it was all kind of this weird hotel in the middle of nowhere, hotel motel, and it was kind of like in the middle between Nevada and um, California, and like one part of it you could gamble, and one part you know alcohol was legal, and all this kind of stuff, and all these shady type of things went on there. Uh, the next one was the film that starred Jennifer Garner, and that was Peppermint, and I really liked that movie. It was you know she had done has, has done like action type TV shows like Alias, Alias and um, and um, some other kind of action stuff. But this was much more of like a super violent revenge film about her getting revenge about these people that had killed her family. But she like really, you know, did I thought she did a really good job. And I would love to see her do more of those kind of roles. The next one was um, the film uh, The Meg. Which I just thought it was a really fun shark film. Really a big fan of Ruby Rose and Jason Statham is always really good. And it was just it was just a fun, you know, gigantic killer shark movie like you know a megalodon. So it was like the biggest shark in the world, or you know, because it was like a prehistoric shark. Uh, and of course, Crazy Rich Asians, which I really really liked. I thought that was just a really really fun movie. Definitely worth watching. Uh, this is one that kind of some people I think might have like heard about it or saw the trailer and thought, oh, this one's probably not very good or it might not be that great or you know. They played the trailer to it so many times. One of those ones where they played the trailer like crazy. But it was a movie called, you know, was Game Night. I th I don't know. I just thought that, um, you know, uh, Rachel McAdams stars in the film, and um, I don't know. I just to me uh, and Jason Bateman, I just thought it was just a really really fun movie about these people coming together and doing these kind of weird games that they play, kind of like Who Done It type games and like and things like that, and it kind of goes awry at night. Um, and then Strangers Pray at Night, which was the, the sequel to Strangers, which really isn't a sequel, though, because it's kind of its own thing with the same characters, sort of. But the reason why I really liked it was because it's like a real throwback, like, um, 80s slasher film with the music and everything. Like, it's worth watching it just for that, that it's like, it totally feels like a lost slasher film, like a lost, like, 80s slasher film. And then, um, Never Going Back, which was about these girls who are trying to, um, Get, trying to get get to the beach they were trying to like raise enough money to get to the beach for the one girl's party and it was um just kind of all the kind of wacky ridiculous kind of stuff that they get into but i feel like it's a movie that not a lot of people saw um bad samaritan which i really thought was like a great kind of like movie about um this guy who was you know they, basically these two guys had like a um and the one guy was from the x factor and he um you know, from the show X Factor, he was acting in the movie, though. But he, um, essentially, these two guys had, like, a sort of a scheme where they would work at this place, driving, like, um, doing the valet and everything, and they would 
you know, put in the GPS and why the one was there. They watch why they're in the restaurant and they go to the people's house and like rob the house and everything. But of course, the one goes to a house and finds the, this girl like trapped in there. It's tied up. And of course, though, they wander into the whole thing and then the person's coming after them. The next one is another one that's almost on the top of absolute best. And it was eighth grade. And, you know, me, I hated middle school. And this is all about this girl doing like video blogs, kind of going through all the kind of bad stuff that you go through in middle school and all the kind of problems and everything. Um, and this next one was a movie called The Miseducation of uh, Cameron Post, which is um, stars, you know, Chloe Grace Moretz and Sasha Blaine, um, you know, who was in American Honey. The director of the film, she's directed a couple other films and, you know, she also acted in Creep 2, which I loved her in Creep 2. I thought, I thought Creep 2 was just a really, really crazy movie that's starring Mark Duplass. But, you know, essentially, though, the film was... A, um, a gay rehabilitation camp that Chloe Grace's character gets, you know, sent to because her parents find out that she's a lesbian, and it's kind of, um, you know, Boy Erased was a very is a similar film because they both came out at the same time of the same year, but um, I, I to me I, I thought Miss Education of Cameron Post to me was a little bit more, uh, it just felt a little more authentic on the whole everything. I don't know. I, I, I just thought that one, I liked that one a little bit more. And then of course, uh, Black Panther, which was another absolute must watch superhero film. And I definitely am interested in seeing, you know, how, where they go with the sequel of the film. Now, now I'm going to talk to you guys about the worst. And the first one for worst was the Slender Man. And this one's kind of in between the best worst, but still, I did not like that movie too much. And and it everything the thing is though I read and heard a lot of people saying that the edit was changed and it was originally going to be an R-rated movie and then it got really really cut up and I don't know if any of you guys saw the original like if you guys saw test screenings or anything I just I was wondering really what what was different but I heard that there was some major changes I don't know if that's true or was just rumors but I did not care for that one too much. The next one was the Jennifer Lawrence film that I really did not like this movie. And I don't know why, but it like, it just, I did not like it at all. And I was, I, sometimes I don't like movies when people are doing kind of weird accents and the accents are kind of questionable a little bit and they're like not perfect. And, and it just, it just, to me, I thought it was boring and kind of confusing and it was Red Sparrow. I don't know why. I just really didn't like it. I, and it was one of the few ones I just, I really did not like it. It's one of those things I've never watched it again in my whole life. Uh, the next one was Pacific Rim Uprising. And I didn't get into that much. I liked the first Pacific Rim that Guillermo del Toro directed. I just thought the new one, it just, I didn't know. I don't know. I didn't care for it. I liked the actors and everything in it, but... When you compare it to the original movie or the first film, I just thought the the new one just was nothing at all compared, like similar at all. This one, this one's watchable, but I just I, I don't know. And this was um, I feel pretty. That one for some reason, another one, I I, I just Amy Schumer like I, I I liked that movie Snatched a little bit. I thought that was kind of funny, but I feel pretty was like her doing PG thirteen, and I'm like eh. I don't, I don't know. I would rather have seen, like, I prefer her in, like, R-rated kind of things. And, like, her cut down to PG-13. Just, I couldn't get into that. Uh, the next one was the Melissa McCarthy film. It was the same situation where it was her doing PG-13. It was Life of the Party. And, like, there was some funny kind of stuff, like, that Vagoogle and all that stuff. Like, you know, you kind of remember that <laughs> that joke and stuff forever. But... I don't know. It, it was her going back to college and her daughter was there. And another one of those things where I liked the actors, but I just didn't care for the whole movie too much. This one, though, I think is the absolute worst. This was absolutely the worst of the year. And this was uh, Action Point. That was, you know, starring Johnny Knoxville. And I, I was really excited to see this. And it just it did not work about him telling the story to his like granddaughter about how he used to run this theme park. And it was just like all the stunts and stuff were kind of bad and it, nothing in it was very funny and I don't know it, it just didn't work and this one you know I, I don't think this is the absolute worst but I did not like it that much and this was Happy Time Murders it was another one where I really was hoping it was gonna be really funny and it was kind of more just sort of stupid it was like these puppets and everything and puppet killers and puppet detectives and everything and I don't know this is another one that was kind of related to like I, I thought of like Game Night and then I thought of this and how much Game Night was a much funnier movie to me but this one was Tag 
Another one, like I don't feel like I'd ever watch it again about these friends that are playing tag forever and trying to tag them. It's like it's watchable, but not nothing I I think I'd ever really look at again. And this one I just saw, and I was so disappointed that this was so like bad. And I'm just sitting there watching the movie like this. And it's another one of those movies too, and people are doing kind of bad accents, and like they, it was, they were kind of bad British accents, and like kind of sort of stupid PG thirteen ish jokes. And it was Holmes and and Watson, you know. And I love you know Will Ferrell, and I love John C. Riley, especially John C. Riley as Doc, when he plays Doctor Steve Brule. You know, and check it out. Like, I love that character. But Holmes and Watson's, to me, like, especially, too, getting John C. Riley and Will Ferrell together again, it's like, I just wish it was Step Brothers, too. You know what I mean? Or even Talladega Nights, too. Both of those were really, really funny movies. And I, I think um, Step Brothers isn't one that whole I, I feel like you can watch it a couple times and you've kind of seen it. I feel like Tag Out Talladega Nights, you could watch it a little bit more. But both of them are really watchable movies. You could watch them again and again. Not all the time but still are very funny i think they, i don't think they everything 100 percent holds up on both those ones but still i would much rather have seen especially you know for them to come together again finally in a new movie i just really would have rather it been Step Brothers 2 hopefully that can still happen this holmes and watson's though it's just i don't know something about it was just like i was just sort of sitting there and a lot of the audience was just kind of sitting there like okay and i don't know it just didn't love it and then now here are the four best worst movies sorry this video is long I just a lot of stuff to talk about but the best worst movies though uh, the first one was Winchester which was the haunted house with you know film you know, starring Helen Mirren and you know it's like one of those movies I knew when I was watching so I know this is not really a good movie but and I, and there was some really goofy kind of ridiculous stuff going on in it but it's really like a good bad movie, and and there. But the thing is, though, there is one really, really, really good scare that really scared me really bad, you know. And I'm not gonna say what it was, but I, it was one of those times like when I was like, <gasps> it was like you felt your heart stop, and I don't know why, but it was just like this one thing in it that scared me so bad. It was just like the thing in um. It follows with that big tall guy coming through the door. Like that, the, 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 there's very few two movies that really, really freak me out. But like that one, and then there's something in this really creeped me out. The next one, this is just a bad movie that was just a fun, bad watch. Because it was like a Fast and Furious set in a hurricane, trying to find this money and everything, and people coming after everybody. And it was the hurricane the movie called The Hurricane Heist. Just a fun, bad movie. Just like a ridiculous stuff going on. Next one is a movie that James Franco directed, which is not was not good but I loved it and I and I, well, I cannot say it's good but I just and I love Mila Jolovich in it Jolovich's character she was like so over the top in it but over the top in this fun amazing way which I loved I mean she was so over the top but it was a movie called Future World but and it was kind of like a Mad Max knockoff kind of thing but it felt like those like like um, Italian like 70s and 80s Mad Max knockoff type films like post-apocalyptic kind of things it felt like that and you know um I liked it. And then the last one for Best Worst was Truth or Dare. It's another one that I know was not a great movie, but and it was so ridiculous and goofy. You know, it was people playing the Truth or Dare game. And there was an, another Truth or Dare movie that was released uh, this year. It was like a sci-fi channel movie. Was, I like that one as well. But, um... This was the Blumhouse one. But I'm not saying this is a bad movie. I'm just saying it's like a good kind of bad movie. And I think that was almost kind of the intention. Is It's supposed to be kind of this goofy, ridiculous deaths. Very, very over the top. But just a very, very fun movie. But anyway, though, guys, that's my list for my pick of, you know, the best and worst. Like I said, sorry this is a long video. Just a lot of stuff to talk about. And I want to kind of give my opinions and reasons why. Just so you kind of know and everything. But in the comments below, though, let me know, you know, if you agree with any of the ones that I say. Or, you know, disagree with any of them. Let me know some of your picks for best best or worst movie you know best worst movies of the year and and below too let me know any ones that you say are like ones that i should definitely check out and maybe i haven't seen but anyway guys thanks so much for watching and subscribing and i'll see you guys later bye